Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Pat O'Brien, Robert Preston, and Ralph Delamay in The Fighting 69. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The battle flags of many regiments are celebrated in American history, but there's none more famous than the brave banner of the 69th New York, the fighting 69th of glorious memory. In 1861, in 1898, in 1917, they marched to war. The number of the regiment is different now, but it's the same fighting 69th in spirit as they march in 1942. Our play tonight is a story of this regiment in the First World War, a play adapted from Warner Brothers' thrilling motion picture, The Fighting 69th. Heroes of fact as well as fiction are here, men like Father Duffy and Wild Bill Donovan. Our cast, I'm sure, will do them honor. Pat O'Brien and Robert Preston and Ralph Bellamy. As Father Duffy, Pat O'Brien plays the same part he did on the screen. This is a story of men, Tried by fire, a story of strength and courage and adventure, a drama of some of the men who've made America great and set the example their sons follow now. We think it's a timely play that will answer many of the letters we've received, like this one from Denver, which reads, This is my annual thank you note for the Lux Radio Theater and for Lux Flake. We haven't missed one of your performances in more than a year, like everyone else, we're fond of comedies these days because we all need a chance to laugh. But there's another kind of play which makes a big hit with us, the dramas that make us proud we're Americans. Please give us all the good ones of this type you can find. We'll, you'll be interested to know that the Lux Flake consumption is going up at our house because we're trying to make many things, <laughs> particularly woolen things, last as long as we can. That sounds like a patriotic job for Lux Flakes. And I'm sure the fighting 69th is the kind of play she means. So here's the curtain going up on the first act, starring Pat O'Brien as Father Duffy, Robert Preston as Jerry Plunkett, and Ralph Bellamy as Wild Bill Donovan. Back in April 1917, they said it would take a year for America to raise an army. Within three months, the first contingent of American troops reached the port of San Nazaire. Within a year, not only had a great army been raised, but 300,000 American fighting men had been landed on the soil of France. Among these was the pride of New York, the Fighting 69th. They came from the factories, from the offices of New York City, from mansions on Fifth Avenue, from tenements on the east side. They were trained at Camp Mills, and there, as each new detail of stumbling rookies arrived, they were greeted by Major Donovan, known to the men as Wild Bill Donovan. You men are about to take the oath of allegiance to your country, to a regiment that in hard battle on many fields has earned the nickname the Fighting 69th. No man has ever let the regiment down, don't forget that. Now, repeat after me. I, I say your name. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the United States. To the United States of America. Of America. That I will serve them honestly and faithfully. That I will serve them honestly and faithfully against all their enemies whomsoever. Against all their enemies whomsoever. That I will obey the orders. And I will obey the orders of the President of the United States. Of the President of the United States and of the officers appointed over me. And the officers appointed over me according to the rules and articles of war according to the rules and articles of war oh help me god oh help me god lieutenant major donovan kindly inform the commanding officer my battalion is now up to strength that's all yes sir hey hey hi jerry plunkett to solemnly swear i'll bear faith and allegiance 
Hey, what does that guy think we are, the Ladies' Aid Society? What's hating you, mister? I joined this outfit to get a crack at the Fritz. Not to stand around taking Boy Scout oats. Oh, you there. Rookie, step out. You talking to me? I ain't talking to myself. What's your name? Jerry Plunkett. What's yours? <laughs> Quiet! Who told you you could talk? Nobody. I've been doing it since I was two years old. <laughs> Shut up! You're a very funny man, Plunkett. Very funny. <laughs> he certainly is. A scream. Quiet! What's your name? Sure, Sergeant. My name's Mike Murphy. Well, don't pass any remarks, see? Detail. Forward. What? Wait a minute. What did you say your name was? Mike Murphy, your vice Murphy, huh? What were you born? I was born a boy. <laughs> That's enough of that. Hey, Murphy, don't argue. Royce Schlemiel, er weist von gar nicht. Was weist there? Er ist der Ballabos. <laughs> nicht für mein Geld. Quiet! Okay, okay. What name were you born with? Me? Yeah, you. Murphy. Misha Moskowitz. Where'd you get the Murphy? I took it. You see, I wanted to go over with the Fighting 69. I see. Okay, Mike, you'll do. Thank you. But after you, Plunkett, keep your face shut and your eyes front, or you'll be peeling potatoes for the rest of your stretch. Go on, you big ick me. What did you say? I said it was a nice day. <laughs> Read the chart, soldier. My eyes are okay. Can you read the top line? No, only the letters. I don't know what it means. Read it! Oh, sure, sure. B for Brooklyn, Y for Yonkers, Q for Queens, H for Harlem, and X marks the Bronx. Private Plunker, two shirts, OD, size 17. I only wear a 15. They'll shrink. Riches, OD, size 42. 42? Why, they fall down on me. That's your problem. Next. Tactics in this weather. Boy, that fixes us. You got a cigarette, soldier? Look, don't you ever buy your own? What for? Yeah, thanks. Say, you fellas, do you know how many guys has died of exposure on night tactics in the last ten years? You got a match? Hey, what's the good of going out in the dark? You can't see anything anyway. Ah, oh, quit your crab and plunk it. It's all part of the game. Yeah, some game. Get shoved around by Wild Bill Donovan and that thick mick of a top sergeant. Say, you, lay off of that thick mick stuff, do you hear? Hey, listen, flannel mouth, I'll say what I please, and if you don't like it, you're Listen, you. Hey, you guys, cut it out. What's the matter here? Nothing. Well, break it up. Go on, Plunkett, beat it. Yeah, sure, sure. I see you around sometime, soldier. Listen, Frank, keep away from that loudmouth Plunkett. He's a wrong soldier, Savvy. I can take care of him. Never mind that. Stay clear of him. Hey, here's Father Duffy. Oh, hello, Father. Uh, hello, Father Duffy. Hi. Evening, Father. Hello, boys. How are you? Hello, Tom. How's the missus? Expecting again, Father. I didn't ask her condition. I asked for her health. <laughs> She's fine, Father. Evening, Father. Evening, Lieutenant. How's everything going? Our division's filling up, Father. Fourth Alabama's came in today. Yes, I saw them. In another couple of months, you'll all be making history. Maybe quicker than you think. We'll need your prayers, Father. Now, when did an Irishman ever need prayers in a fight? <laughs> What are you reading there, Lieutenant? The same book, Father. Poems of Joyce Kilmer. Oh, yes. Uh, by the way, did you ever get up the courage to talk to Kilmer? I've been intending to. Do you think he'd mind? Mind? Uh, Joyce. Yes, Father. Joyce, come here. Yes, Father. Corporal Kilmer, the Lieutenant has a favor to ask of you. Yes, sir? Uh, I, uh... Well, I wonder if you'd mind autographing this book for me. It's yours. I'd be very glad to, Lieutenant. Here's a pen, Joyce. Thank you, Father. Let me see, Joyce, what you've written there. Yours in a common cause. There you are, Lieutenant. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Well, good night. Good night, Father Duffy. Good night, Father. Hey, buddy, you got a match? Match? Yes, I think so. Here. Hey, thanks, buddy. I don't think I've met you yet. No? I've only been around here about three months. <laughs> my name's Plunkett, Jerry Plunkett. Smiling Jerry, they call me, on account of my disposition. What's yours? Oh, I'm Fiery Frank, Duffy for short. Oh, Irish, huh? That's right. Yeah, me too. But I don't practice it. And I don't go for these flannel mounts always singing about Molly Malone, neither. I'm afraid you're in the wrong outfit, son. You see, this regiment has certain traditions. Oh, listen, don't give me that malacca. We both signed up for the same thing, didn't we? 
come back here dripping with all them medals? Big shots with the world, our Erster? Our what? Ersters. You know, you eat them. Uh, how'd you leave things in Brooklyn? Oh, swell. Say, how'd you know I was from Brooklyn? That was my third guess. Oh. Say, you know, you're not so dumb for a soldier. You steer me wise around here, Duffy, and you and me will get places. Now, look. A pal of mine's going to give me a hot one in a fifth at Saratoga. Now, I'll slip it to you and we'll both clean up. What do you say? Oh, uh, thanks. I don't play the horses. Oh, no? Oh, well, that's too bad. Well, a guy who ain't a sucker for the ponies usually goes for the dames. Now, look. I got a couple of telephone numbers. Two blondes. What do you say you and me go AWOL tonight, huh? Uh, well, uh, Jerry, my boy, I think I better tell you something. Hey, what's going on over there? I'm afraid it's a fight. Come on, Jerry. Help me break it up. What for? You don't get medals for that kind of fighting. Boy... Cut it out. Hey, look at those suckers go to it. All right, boys, that's enough. That's enough. Break it up. Terrence, Patty, cut it out. Brian, get out of this. Come on now, stop it. Stop it! Come on, break this up. Hey, look out, boys, it's out of it. I'm Bill. It's Major Donovan. Break this up. Break it up, do you hear? You men go back to your ranks. Get back. Now, who started this ballet ruse? Come on, who started it? It's them Alabama boys, Major Donovan. They said they shot the pants off the 69th in the Civil War. We did, sir. You're right, you did. They, they did, Major? At the Battle of Fredericksburg, this outfit, the 4th Alabamas, broke up the charge of the 69th and stopped us in our tracks. Then they cheered their heads off because they respected a game enemy. Those men on both sides were Americans. They fought then rose above their hatreds and became one people again. And that's as it should be. What do you think the whole nation's out of step but you? Our two regiments are now brigaded together. Their names have been changed. The 69th New York to the 165th United States Infantry. The 4th Alabama to the 167th. They both form part of an organization that will represent every part and section of our country. The Rainbow Division. Every day more are going to join us. Outfits from all over the country. But they're not coming here as Southerners or Easterners, Alaskans or New Englanders. There'll be no room in the rainbow for sectional feuds because now we're all one nation, one team, an all-American team pulling together and known as the United States Army. Now, if you've got to fight, wait till we get overseas. You'll get a belly full of it then. Now get back to your lines and behave yourselves. Okay. Nice thing, Father, fighting with the boys, eh? <laughs> well, it's worth your life to break up a pack of battling Irish. <laughs> I'll look you up tonight, Father. Fine, Bill. Hey, Father, you didn't get hurt, did you? Hurt? Sergeant, who'd hurt me? Well, Jerry, it was quite a brawl, wasn't it? So it's Father, huh? A priest. I suppose I'm just Patsy Dumpcluck, huh? Yeah, my pal, just stringing me along. <laughs> it's funny how a guy can't get away from you birds, even in the army. Well, maybe it's because the saints have their eyes on you, son. Nah, don't give me that. I can look out for myself. Yes, I suppose you can. But if you ever do need me... Now, listen, hard collar, once and for all. I don't need any pious... That's faith... enough of that, punker. Hey, let me go. Come on, get out of here, snapping at father like that. Hey, hey now, you... Sergeant, don't. Let me go, you I'm going to chew you up and spit you out. Now, go on, beat it. My, but you're a violent kind of a man, Sergeant. Yeah, but... Oh, come along, smiling Jerry. Come on, now, get up, son. We'll see about getting that mud off your smiling face. Heads up. Come on, man, heads up. Put some swing into it. You're not dead yet. Heads up. Swing. No, we're not dead yet. We're just muscle-bound, flat-footed, and fed up. Outside of that, we're all right. And a lot that slave driver cares whether we are or not. Pipe down, Plunkett. Always crabbing. Cut it out. Listen, you're in the army now. Yeah. In the army now. You're not behind the plow. You'll never get rich. Close up there, you guys. Hey, you fellas, why are you training for the Olympics? Oh, let's get Wild Bill Donovan's chain gang. There you are, Father. What do you think of it? So this is the insignia of the Rainbow Division. Every color in the spectrum. Don't you like it? Oh, I do indeed. I was just thinking the boys in the 69th might like it better if it were all green. <laughs> B Company, sir, all present and accounted for. B Company, sir, all present and accounted for. Find Lieutenant Wright. Ask him to wait outside for orders. Yes, sir. Another march tonight, Bill? Another march. Bill, don't you think you're a bit too hard on them with all their night hikes and forced marches? 
After all, they're not used to such a grind. I'll handle the military end of it, Father. You take care of their souls. I'm sorry, Bill. No, I'm sorry, Father. War is a business, I know. I've seen what's going on over there. That's why I'm so hard on these men. I've got to be. So they'll be able to face what's coming later. These kids of mine are going up against veterans, schooled in three years of war. They've got to be able to out-endure and out-fight them. Not just be led in half-trained like sheep to the slaughter. Don't you think I wanted to let up on them? I didn't dare. Had to think of the future. Well, now the future is here. I couldn't tell you this before. This isn't just a night hike, Father. This is it. You mean we're going over tonight? Yes. Give me your blessing, Father. Benedictio Deo, I'll never turn this part to superior spirit of sanctity. I shall have super tired my new temper. Thank you, Father. All present in the counter for, sir. Colonel Squad! First Company! Squad Ray! Squad Ray! Almighty God, in thine infinite mercy, grant unto me thy servant the wisdom to guide my young flock through the trials of war. Oh, Father, they're so young. They know so little of life and nothing at all of that terrible and bloody altar towards which they move, carrying so eagerly the bright sacrifice of their youth. Their need will be great, O oh Lord, and I'm weak. Therefore, I beseech thee in the name of thy blessed Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Grant me strength to keep them strong and steadfast in the faith, in decency and courage, to the glory of God, their country, and their regiment, in the bad times to come. And if in battle you see fit to gather them to your own protecting arms, thy will be done. But let them die like men, valiant and unafraid. Our stars, Pat Bryan, Robert Preston, and Ralph Bellamy, will return in just a moment for Act Two of The Fighting 69th. During our brief intermission, we want to tell you how you can have a lovelier garden this summer at a trifling cost. You see, out here in Hollywood, waiting for you at the Lux Garden Club, are three gorgeous early flowering chrysanthemum plants. Not just cuttings, but strong, well rooted, field grown plants. And they're yours for only 10 cents and the opening tab from a large box of Lux Flakes. Think of it. Three first-quality chrysanthemum plants. They're worth a dollar. And our Lux Mum plants have had a special vitamin treatment. Yes. Every plant you get from the Lux Garden Club has been vitamin treated with transplantone for stronger roots and earlier flowering. In the early fall, just when other flowers are through blooming, you'll have a garden the neighbors will envy. Dozens and dozens of beautiful, long-lasting mums from each plant up to three or four inches across. They're easy to grow, and they'll bloom year after year. One plant at each set blossoms in a stunning shell pink color, a favorite for flower arrangements. And if you haven't a garden, you can grow your mums in flower pots or window boxes in any sunny window. There's a leaflet of planting instructions enclosed with the mums. And another telling you how to get other flower bargains. Now, here's what you do to get your mum plants. Your dealer has handy order blanks for this wonderful flower offer right now. Send... Ten cents in coin. No stamps, please. Ten cents in coin and the opening tab from a large box of Lux Flakes to Lux Garden Club, Hollywood, California. That's easy to remember, isn't it? Lux Garden Club, Hollywood, California. We'll send your plants to you right away within two weeks. A dollar value for only ten cents. And while our supply lasts, you can order as many sets of three as you want. Do it at once so you won't be disappointed. For each set of three plants that you order, send 10 cents in coin and the opening tab from a large box of Lux Flakes to Lux Garden Club, Hollywood, California. And don't forget to include your name and address. This offer is good only in the United States. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Fighting 69th, starring Pat O'Brien as Father Duffy, Robert Preston as Jerry Plunkett, and Ralph Bellamy as Wild Bill Donovan. 
Anywhere from Howland to a Jersey City pier, and then across the sea to the battlefields of France. Marching men, fighting men, tough guys, quiet guys, big guys, little guys, singing as they move up to the front. It's Christmas Eve. In the 69th Regiment headquarters, there's a meeting of the staff. The Colonel bends low over his map. Our present orders are to march to Lunavie, starting the day after Christmas. We'll probably see our first action very quickly. Think your supply train can keep up with us, Captain? It will, sir. If my men have to pull the wagons and carry the horses. Father Duffy, what about your midnight mass tonight? Everything's set, sir. Barring the conversion of a few heathen. Present company not accepted. <laughs> and facilities for the non-Catholics? All taken care of, sir. The Methodist chaplain has arranged the service for the Protestant lads. My friend, Misha Murphy, built him a pulpit. <laughs> I've wired GHQ to send a minister to the Alabamas. Another wire to Paris about the chaplains of the Illinois. <laughs> you know, if some of the folks back home knew how well all of the different faiths got along together here, it would cause a scandal to many a pious mind. <laughs> Hello, Father. Hello, boys. Hiya, Father. Fine, fine. How are you? I don't know, Father. You gotta watch yourself in this climate. Ah, uh, he's always got something wrong with him. Now wait, wait. Maybe he's sick. It's getting a lot of the boys. First, your arms go to sleep. Yeah, that's it. They're asleep right now. And you hear a buzzing in your ears, huh? Yeah. Then the most fatal symptom: you get a light feeling in the head. Holy smoke! I got it. And that means you need exercise, and there's nothing in the world like pumping an organ at midnight mass. It'll make a new man here. <laughs> He's got to pump the organ. <laughs> that's right, Mac, that's right. And you're going to sweep out the church. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. Jerry, I'm talking to you. What's the matter, Jerry? Don't you hear well? Yeah, I hear you. You got a match, St. Francis? Get on your feet when an officer comes in the room. On your feet, I said. Take that cigarette out of your mouth. Okay. That's better. All right, boys. See you later. Stay here, Jerry. Come on, then. Outside. We've got plenty of things to do around this dump, around this camp. Outside. Don't forget midnight mass, boys. Confessions this afternoon. Well, Jerry. My boy, you know... You're getting yourself so well-liked in this army, the men would rather machine gun you than they would the Germans. You're bad enough at Camp Mills, but here you're getting worse. Ah, well, that's one man's That's everyone's opinion. Calling you a misfit and a troublemaker. Oh, gee, that's tough, you know it. I'm going to bust right out crying. Sit down a minute. Now, to begin with, Jerry, I... I don't think you're such a tough guy as you'd like to think. You're only kidding yourself. You happen to be your own biggest sucker. Yeah? Oh, I've seen a lot of life. And men, you're just plain lonesome, Jerry. That's all that's the matter with you. Me? Lonesome? Ha, 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 that's rich. Oh, sure, 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 I know. Smart boys don't need anybody. Take care of themselves. But we've got some black days ahead of us. When a man will have the need of a friend he can depend on. Jerry, you've made no friends. None at all. And that's where I thought I might come in. We're going in the trenches right after Christmas. Yeah? You're not kidding me, are you? Oh, say, that's great. Well, that's what we come over here for. And the sooner the better. Jerry, how long since you've been to confession? Oh. Yeah, I figured you'd worm around to that sooner or later. We're having midnight mass tonight. And Christmas isn't a bad time for any of us to sort of take stock and check up. Come on, what do you say? Why don't you join the boys tonight? Now, look, chaplain. Get this once and for all. I'm here to soldier, not to pray. I don't go for that Holy Joe stuff. And there's no use trying to convert me. I'm not trying to convert you, Jerry. I'm only asking you to come back to your religion and recognize the fact of Almighty God. Well, all right. Merry Christmas.
night. Same as last night. Side of the road. What road? We ain't been on a road since Tuesday. Keep moving. Keep moving. Come on. Hold up. Hold up, man. Uh, I don't know if I can keep this up. No, of course you can. Here, let me carry your gun. Oh, eh? uh, no, no. Well, I just let you... Why? You feel better soon. There we are. Oh, thanks, buddy. Say, you're that poet fella, aren't you? Joyce Kilmer? Yes, I am. My name's Tim. Hiya. Hiya. My shoulders are killing me. Ah, those blasted pack straps, they cut through your shoulders like a knife. My shoulders ache beneath my pack. Boy, listen to that gunner. You're getting close to the war. My shoulders ache beneath my pack. Lie easy across upon his back. I wish I hadn't thrown away my extra shoes. Skull done, rifle, but my fingers are froze. My rifle hand is stiff and numb. I hope it don't rain again tonight. From my pierced palms, red rivers run. Close up! What's the matter with you? Don't stand on your feet! Come on! Close up! Men shout at me who may not speak. Keep going! They say no excursion! They scourge thy back and smote thy cheek. Say, soldier, what's that you're muttering, huh? Oh, well, it may turn out to be a prayer. Maybe only a poet. Keep them moving up there, Sergeant. Take them into the trenches. Well, Father, this is it. Pray for us, Father. I will indeed. The reserve area is back that way. Yes, I know. I saw it on the map. Now, look, Father, you've got to go back there. Regulations. Funny, you know, with all the firing going on, I seem to have lost my hearing, Bill. I tell you, you can't stay up here in the trenches. Now, 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 Bill. Supposing some of the boys met with an accident. But no, to happen, you know. You wouldn't deny them the consolation of my matchless presence now, would you? As the priest said to the bishop, I only go to the races in case one of the jockeys falls off. <laughs> well, it's near enough. Come on, Bill. Now, look, you guys. This here thing's a trench, and we got a good reason for building them this way. Now, keep off the fire and step until you get orders. That probably won't be until morning. Okay. And one thing more. In that box over there, there's a lot of flares and a very pistol. They're to be used only if we're attacked during the night. Now, keep your mitts off them unless you want Heine to blow us all over France. What's the matter, Sarge? You getting the wind up? There's always an empty job waiting for you in Paris, you know. Or is it just them stripes talking again? Maybe you ain't heard tell, soldier. There's a war on up here. Yeah, I read it in the papers. <laughs> but I ain't seen it yet. If this is all there is to it, I don't see what them frogs are doing. If I was you, I'd keep my big gap shut about the frogs till I'd earned a fighting man's right to talk. Well, maybe you think I won't. Oh, why, hero, huh? Would you be satisfied with a distinguished service cross? Well, if I don't get it, it'll be because I got a wooden one. And if you don't believe me, you got a bet. See, that guy hates himself. Well, that makes it unanimous. Now, don't forget what I said, men. Okay. Oh, hey! Hey, you guys, what do you say we match to see who watches the baby and who sleeps? Nothing doing. We all watch the baby. Uh, some excitement, huh? Hey, I wonder what it looks like out there. Out where? Out there, that no man's land. I think I'll take a look. Hey, listen, guy. The sergeant said to stay off the firing staff. Ah, shut up. I don't see... It. Hey, look out! Get down! Holy, holy smoke. You okay? Did you get hit, Plunkett? No, I, I don't think so. Hey, look what it did. Look at that dent in my helmet. Yeah, better there than in your head. I hardly see me. I couldn't see him. The moon's behind us, dope. Yeah? Well, I'm gonna see him. Give me one of them flares. Hey, lay off, Plunkett. Get out of my way. I'm going to pay that guy off. You'll light up the whole train. Look out. Don't shoot that flare. Here goes. All the better to see you with, Heine. <laughs> you crazy fool. Now I get him. Look at that. Look out. Stay down, men. They've spotted us. Hey, give me a hand grenade. I can see him. Get up. That's it. It's bright as daylight. I got the rain. The paint out. Hey. Hey, fellas. I... I've been hit. I've been... Lay him down. Oh. Don't lift his head. That's your bed. Oh. That's your bed. Bad? Sergeant told you not to touch them players. There's another guy got it. We can thank you for this. You're murdering these guys. Hey, listen, we got to get out of here. Stay where you are, punkin'. They're dropping them right on us. I'm getting out of here, I tell you. I'm getting out of here. Father, Father Duffy, we need you here. Coming. Father Duffy. Jerry. Jerry, what's the matter? Are you wounded? No, listen, Father, over there in the dugout. What is it, Jerry? I just saw him. I was going in the dugout and a shell hit him. She did their very life in there. Jerry, what were you doing in a dugout? You were on duty in the front line in the trenches. Who sent you back here? Well, nobody thought I'd come back myself. You see, I, I had a... Yes, Jerry, I do see. Indeed, I do. There'll be a lot of boys who went up there with you, Jerry. He won't come back tomorrow. You'll be alive, but I wonder if he'll be glad. Oh, 
Perhaps their brave young spirits hear the bugle sing, Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Slumber will where the shell screamed and fell. Let your rifles rest on the muddy floor. You will not need them anymore. Danger's past. Now at last, go to sleep. And up to heaven's doorway floats, in the wood called Rouge Bouquet, a delicate cloud of bugle notes that softly say, Farewell, farewell. Comrades true, born anew, peace to you. Your souls shall be where the heroes are, and your memory shine like the morning star. Brave and dear, shield us here. Farewell. There's no use talking, Father. I'm getting rid of Plunkett. I'm having him transferred to another regiment. Now, He's a bad egg, a troublemaker. Unreliable on the line. He's getting himself talked about in a way the 69th doesn't relish. Bill, give the lad another chance. I happen to know he had a pretty bad shock up there. Yes? Well, it's finished him as a soldier. I've had nothing but complaints from his company commander on down. Picking fights behind the lines and dodging patrols when he's up there. Reporting sick when he's detailed to wiring parties. One excuse after another whenever there's a man's job to do. I want to have a man like that in this outfit. Now, Bill, I don't want to interfere with discipline, but... It's possible he has a good side, too. If he has, we'll let him develop it somewhere else. My mind's made up. Bill, you're not being fair about this. You've got to give him a chance to redeem himself, make a man of himself. Bill, I've heard you say a hundred times, the 69th makes men. Well, it makes men out of cowards and never cowards out of men. Now, here's one time I can prove you're right. If you trust me and let him stay, I'll take full responsibility for him. Oh, that blarneying tongue of yours. Don't know why I didn't let him send you home to collect funds for the Knights of Columbus. <laughs> well, maybe he wanted to save me the trouble of swimming back. What do you say, Bill? Did Jerry Plunkett stay? All right. All right, but he's your guinea pig from now on. Okay, fine. Oh, uh, one more thing, Bill. I wonder if you'd okay providing two buses to take the Jewish boys back to their services at Eton. I'll take care of it, Father. <laughs> it's a good thing we've no Mohammedans in the division, or I'd have no time for the war. Oh, Father, the rest of the boys are on their way up to the lines at Ork River. I kept Plunkett here. You see that he gets up there? Oh, I will indeed. I'll be on my way myself tonight. Evening, Jerry. Huh? Who's that? Oh, relax, son. Take it easy. It's only Father Duffy making his parish rounds. You on your way up? Yeah. So am I. Suppose we go along together, huh? Hey, look, Father, leave me alone, will you? All right, sir. No, no, wait a minute. I didn't mean that. <laughs> you know, you're like the old Irishman who'd rather be quartered than lonesome. A little jumpy, are you? Well, we all are. The men, the officers, it's not easy for any of them. The officers? Brass hats? What they got to be jumpy about? Some general right now sitting in an office back there sticking pins in a map. But me, I'm on that map. I know I'm there. Ducking in the shell holes... Listening to bullets rattling around my head and figuring any minute some hiney I can't even see is going to crack one into me. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy for the brass hat. He ain't here. Oh. This isn't a fight I mind, Father. Gee, I, I love a fight, and I ain't never been afraid of anything in my whole life. But this stuff, well, it's made me yellow. Me, of all the guys in the outfit, yellow. Scared is the word, Jerry, not yellow, and you'll get over it. Get over it? And everywhere I go and everything I do, I see the faces of all those guys I killed up there in the trench that night. Staring at me and saying nothing. I can't fight it anymore. I tried. Goes along for a while, everything's okay. And then suddenly it hits until I feel like if I don't get up and run away, I'll go nuts. Now, it's not for me to say that that's all nonsense, Jerry. It isn't. But there's only one way you can lick it. And that's through faith and prayer. Faith? Can faith stop bullets? If a guy gets his pins blown off, will a prayer put him back on again? Or bring the dead back to life? No, but faith and prayer can help you defeat the fear that's possessing you. Oh, Jerry, it's peace and courage I'm offering you. If you'd only open up your heart and take it. Look, Father. I'm going up to the front line. I don't pray up there, I hope. I haven't got faith in anything or anybody. I'm sorry, sir. There seems to be something wrong with the carburetor. Take you long to fix it? I don't think so, sir. I'll walk around a bit. 
Come on, Potter, let's go. Is that somebody over there? Yes, sir, it is. How far is it to field headquarters, do you know? Oh, I'd say about two kilometers, a little more or less. Who is that? Is that you, Father Duffy? Yes, it is. Well, good evening, Father. Nice to see you again. Thank you. It's fine to see you. On your way up to the front? Yes, I notice you are, too. 69th has done some fine work up there. We're very proud of them. I'd like to tell them you said that, if I may. I wish you would. I only wish I could tell it to some of the other boys. Boys who won't be coming back. They were good soldiers, Father. They fought like good soldiers. They died that way. We're not forgetting them. I think that's all the tribute they'd want. But from now on, it's up to the rest of us, Father, to make certain they didn't give their lives in vain. Ready in a minute, sir. Well, good night, Father. Good luck. Good luck to you. Well, Jerry, remember the brass hats we were talking about? That was one of them. Yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. Chief of Staff. The looks of things, he's on the map, though, isn't he? He's been there a long time, Jerry. In the trenches, standing beside his men, over the top of them. A fighting man, Jerry, one of the best. <laughs> they say he can spit nickels and chase Germans as well as any doughboy in the whole Rainbow Division. Yeah. What's his name? Douglas MacArthur. <laughs> for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Pat O'Brien, Robert Preston, and Ralph Bellamy in Act Three of The Fighting 69. But now, Sally says... It's easy as pie. Easy as rolling off a log. Easy as ABC. Easy as L-U-X to do that big job of spring house cleaning with Lux Flakes. You can freshen up the curtain. Wipe down the woodwork. Wash out the slip covers. And have everything come out spick and span, fresh and unfaded. Including yourself. <laughs> if you stick to new quick Lux for every soap and water job around the house. Seriously, though... Spring cleaning this year is different. Our government has asked us to take care of the things we own, to make them last longer so we won't have to replace them quickly. It's a real duty now, as well as a matter of thrift, to take the gentlest kind of care of everything. Harsh soaps, cake soap rubbing, are hard on fabrics and colors. Make them wear out before their time. But gentle, rich, Lux suds get rid of dust and dirt quickly, thoroughly, safely. You don't have to tell us how luck saves things, Mr. Ruick. We women have known that for a long time. We've proved it over and over again. That's why so many millions of us always use luck for all our washable dresses and blouses, for underthings and stockings. There's nothing better than luck flakes for cutting down on stocking runs. Right, Sally. And you save the same way when you use Lux all around the house. Yes, to save your blankets, slipcovers, curtains, bedspreads. To keep them fresh and new-looking and useful longer. And to save your hands. Stick to gentle new quick lux for every soap and water job you have to do. Anything safe in plain water is safe in lux. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act three of The Fighting 69th. Starring Pat O'Brien, Robert Preston, and Ralph Bellamy. Artillery and the blooming engineers. Oh, they couldn't lick the infantry in a hundred thousand years. They're on the march again, the fighting 69th. Moving up under fire to the front line trenches. Look at them, Father. There's nobody could lick them. They're moving into a tough spot now. The toughest we've been in yet. Bill, is it true you're going to attack on the Argonne without artillery preparation? It is. I'm going to give Fritz a little surprise. Well, bye, Father. Bye, Bill. I'll be seeing you up there after you get underway. Oh, by the way, Bill, were you able to do anything for Jerry? No, nothing. Not even if I could. Bill, are you sure you're being fair? Look, Father, I gave him his chance at Oak River. You know what he did? He admitted it in the court-martial. He ran away, deserted. It wasn't the first time, either. It's going to be the last. Yes, and if I hadn't asked you to transfer him, it might never have happened. 
It's my fault, Bill. I told the court martial it was my fault. The boy shouldn't be executed for something he couldn't help. Father, let's not go into this again. Never in history has a 69th man disgraced his regiment the way he's done. He's been tried and sentenced. Tomorrow morning, he's got to take what's coming to him. May God have mercy on his soul. What do you want this time, Father? Oh, I was just wondering, Jerry, if there was anything I could do for you. What can you do for me? This is Curtin's, ain't it? Well, there's still time to make your peace. Now, I don't stand there talking like a sap. Don't you understand they're going to shoot me? Tomorrow morning I get it. You're so anxious to help me do something about that. I've tried, Jerry. Believe me, I've tried. I've gone to the Colonel, to General Headquarters. It's no use. Well, it's not my fault I couldn't take it, is it? Jerry, you're not the only one in the regiment who ever knew fear just happened, you couldn't face it, that's all. Hey, look, maybe you can still do something. Get me out of here. Help me to escape. I'll get home some way, and after the war, they'll forget all about me. No, Jerry. But why not? You're a priest. They can't do anything to you. You're forgetting I'm a soldier as well as a priest. Yeah, I see. Oh, Jerry, ask me anything else. I will. I'll ask you to beat it. You don't understand. Oh, let me alone. Go on, get out. <laughs> That case is uh, down this way, Father. One of the boys has been asking for it. What's his name, Doctor? Well, he keeps saying it's Murphy. Michael Murphy. Mike Murphy. Here he is. He's pretty far gone, Father. Father. Father Duffy. Well, Mike, how do you feel, lad? I... I got a bad one, Father. Oh, now, don't be like that. Takes more than a 77 shell to keep a good Irishman down. Father, could you say a prayer? I've got the book here. Mike, lad. That's a Jewish book you've got. Wouldn't you be wanting someone of your own faith? No time. Read, Father. You mean you want me to help you pray? Yes, Father. Read. Oh, Lord God... I know that my life and my death are in thy hands. May it be thy will to heal me. But if thou wilt my death, may it be atonement for all my sins. Into thy hands I entrust my spirit. Thou art my redeemer, Lord God of truth. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yisroel Adonai. Eloheinu Adonai Ekon. Thank you. Thank you, Father. He's dead, Father. Rest in peace. Oh, surely they'll not be shelling a hospital now. <laughs> You can't let me die like this. Let me out. Let me out. Harry, Harry. Hey, Father. They went away. They left me here. The guard's been killed, Jerry. Come on, I'm taking you out. Where are we going? What are you going to do with me? Jerry, you've looked in the face of death these past few hours. Death by execution and death from shell fire. Now you're still alive. I can't let you stay here with this. You're free, Jerry. Free of everything but yourself. I can't tell you what to do. I can only point out two roads to you. One to safety for a while, perhaps to home. Do you hear that? It's fallen on your regiment, Jerry. They're in a trap. It's possible that one of them will come out alive. There are your two ways. Whichever you choose, you'll have to walk alone. What do you mean, whichever I choose? You think I'm crazy enough to try to go up to the front through that? Goodbye, Father. Father! Father! Where are you? Father Duffy. Here. Here. Are you, are you, are you all right, Father? If you can move this stuff off of me. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, don't, don't try to move. I'll get you out. Here. There. There. That's the boy. Thanks, Jerry. Father? You hurt? Uh, no. No. Just stunned a little. Father. Father Duffy. 
Yes, here. Father, can you come to the hospital? There's been a direct hit. The wounded are getting panicky. Come along, Jerry. I may need you. Father, you can't go in that place. The roof's liable to cave in any minute. They need me, Jerry. No, don't do it, Father. Come on outside. Boys. Boys, boys. This is Father Duffy. I'm here. Don't leave us, Father. Well, now, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Kicking up a fuss like this over a few shells. Timmy, lad, I'm surprised. You want Almighty God to think you've forgotten him? Come on now, Sean, buck up. Buck up, all of you. Believe me, I tell you, everything is going to be all right now. Get hold of yourself. Come on now. We'll all say the Lord's Prayer. Repeat after me. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. Amen. There, boys. That's better now, isn't it? Jerry, my boy, did I really hear you praying? Yes, Father. I believe it now. Thank you, Father. And if it so be that he findeth, amen, I say to you, he rejoiceth more for that than for the ninety-nine which went not astray. All that wire around this fire, we're cooked if we don't get through. We've got to get through. Once we get into that mess, we can finish the thing off. Well, here's a scrap that should satisfy even the fighting Irish, eh, Sergeant? Yeah, it is a fine bit of a scrimmage, sir. We've got to knock out those machine guns somehow, cut a hole through that wire. Are all those Stokes mortars out of commission? Yes, sir, and the crews are all killed. Sir. Maybe there's one we could fix up somehow. That'd do it. Well, there's a mortar outfit about 50 yards off the flank. Maybe I could have a look, sir. All right, go ahead, Sergeant. Take five minutes. I'll go myself, sir. It'll be quicker. Sergeant! Take some men. I don't need them, sir. Go on, your highness. Blast away at me. Blast away. When I get this gun going, I'll blow the lot of you to kingdom come. Uh, now I've got it. Oh! oh. 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 Jersey! Oh. oh! Sergeant, where are you? Who is it? It's me, Plunkett. Plunkett. What are you doing out here? Did you run the wrong way? I didn't come out here to look at your big, ugly puss. Now, shut up and show me how to use this mortar. What for? So you can turn it on the 69th and kill off a few more good men? Now, listen, I know what you think of me, and I know what I think of you. Never mind our own private scrap. I'll give you a belly full of that later. Now, shut your big Irish trap and show me how to use this mortar. If you don't, I'll shove this bayonet right through you. You show me how to use it so I can't miss. Well, (coughs) there's nothing to it. Here, put your hand on the fuse. Pull the pin, drop it in. Here, Here, I got it. Hey, these shells don't look like so much. No, there's enough TNT in them to blow a lane in that wire as wide as Central Park. Yeah, well, I'll tell you in a second. Here's a kiss for you, Heine. There, that's the boy, right on the nose. I'll show him, Crouch. Put a sausage skin on this one, Heine. Ha <laughs> ha, let him have it, Jerry. Give me another shell. Yeah, good. They got the range. They'll be hammering us now. Come on, let him. Here's one for the 69. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, oh, I hate to say it, Jerry, but uh, you might have to make us of a soldier if you live long enough. Pipe down, slug. Come on and get it, Sprint. Come on up and take your liquor. Here's one for Brooklyn and the Bronx. <laughs> Sergeant. Here we are, sir. Here. Are hit, Sergeant? Oh, I, I'm all right. You did a fine job, man. We swarmed all over them through the hole you made. The hole I made? There's the man who did it, sir. He's been hurt bad. Let's see him. Come on, look up here, soldier. You did a fight. Jerry Plunkett. Yes, sir. Major. I'm sorry, soldier. Get for the Duffy. Get for the Duffy. Jerry. Jerry, it's Father Duffy. Hello, Father. 
hoping you'd get here in time. You're not afraid, are you, Jerry? No fun. Either. Not anymore. <laughs> I've, I've been in an awful lot of trouble to you, haven't I, Father? Who's that with you? Major Donovan, Jerry. Oh. I just wanted to tell you, Jerry, the 69th is mighty proud of you. 69th. Thank you, sir. I'm ready now, Father. Puristum sanctum, onkyonum, indulgia tividominus, quid quid, requesti, amen. And I once thought this boy was a coward. On November 11th, 1918, the great guns were silenced at last. Out of the gloom of doubt and despair came the shining light of victory and peace. The boys came back with the quiet pride of fighting men who have fought hard and well. They marched home again. And there were others who marched with them. Not in body, but in spirit. The lost legion of American boys who lay resting on the fields of France. Heavenly Father, here I beseech you the prayer of this America's lost generation. They love life too, O oh Lord. It was as sweet to them as to the living of today. They accepted privation, wounds, and death, that an ideal might live. Don't let it be forgotten, Father. Amid turmoil and angry passions, when all worthwhile things seem swept away, let the tired eyes of a troubled world rise up and see the shining citadel of which these young lives form the imperishable stone. America, citadel of freedom. May it stand always as a stronghold of justice and liberty for all the peoples of the earth. This I beg of you, through Christ our Lord. the curtain falls on tonight's play. In just a moment, our stars will return to the microphone. This Lux Radio Theater performance of the Fighting 69th has come to you tonight with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with the stars of our play. The Fighting 69th will live forever in the hearts of the American people. And in this theater... We'll remember the way Pat O'Brien, Robert Preston, and Ralph Bellamy told us the story tonight. Well, it was a great honor to have a part in it, C.B. When I was in New York ten days ago, Pat, I made a little pilgrimage to Times Square for a special purpose. That's a fine statue of Father Duffy there, C.B. Mm, he was an inspiring figure, Ralph. I'm sure he'd have liked the way Pat O'Brien played his part tonight. Thank you, C.B., Two years ago, I had the privilege of placing a wreath at the foot of Father Duffy's statue. I think the audience would be interested in that telegram you received from another man who was concerned in tonight's play, C.B. I'll ask Ralph Bellamy to read it, Bob. He played the part of that man. It's addressed to Cecil B. DeMille, the Lux Radio Theater, Hollywood. It reads, As one who had the privilege of serving with the 69th Regiment, I'm looking forward to hearing the broadcast. I deeply regret I cannot be with you in person. Kindest regards. Signed, William J. Donovan. I had the pleasure of seeing Colonel Donovan at dinner less than two weeks ago. And since he's now handling a highly important assignment from the President of the United States, I think we understand why he can't be here. I've learned from Washington that tonight's play is being short-waved to American forces all over the world. So perhaps it's being heard by the fighting 69th of 1942, wherever they are. And I know all of them join us tonight from wherever they are in a salute to the man who was their chief of staff and became their divisional commander in France. That's the Rainbow Division, Pat? Yes, Bob. 
And the general I'm talking about both named it and organized it. Right now, he's somewhere in Australia. General Douglas MacArthur. One of the things we can do to help him is to buy a stack of United States savings bonds. Get them at any bank, post office, or savings and loan association. And don't forget those United States savings stamps. Almost any store or newspaper carrier boy has them. And the whole nation ought to have them. What's your play next week, C.B.? It's a play that I worked, ate, and slept with for more than a year, Pat. Northwest Mounted Police. A story of some of the world's most heroic men. And heading our cast will be three of the same stars you saw in the picture. Gary Cooper, Paulette Goddard, and Preston Foster. Gary plays a Texas ranger who's tracking down an outlaw in Canada. He arrives during one of the most thrilling episodes in Canadian history, the time when 50 men may have saved a nation. And we are saving a reserved seat for you next Monday night when Gary Cooper, Paulette Goddard, and Preston Foster star in Northwest Mounted Police. I'll say what CB didn't. It's a great picture. Good night. Good night, night. CB. Good night. That applause is for the fighting 69 somewhere in the world. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gary Cooper, Paulette Goddard, and Preston Foster in Northwest Mounted Police. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Pat O'Brien appeared tonight through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures and is starring currently in their production, Two Yanks in Trinidad. Robert Preston is now seen on the screen in Cecil B. DeMille's Paramount Technicolor production, Reap the Wild Wind. Ralph Bellamy is currently working in the picture Lady in a Jam at Universal. Heard in tonight's play were Jack Mather, Charles Seal, Hans Conried, Edward Marr, Tyler McVeigh, Arthur Gilmore, Leo Cleary, Edwin Max, Griff Barnett, Eric Rolfe, Stanley Farrar, and Warren Ash. Tune in next Monday night to hear Gary Cooper, Paulette Goddard, and Preston Foster in Northwest Mounted Police. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>